He may have been second on the moon, but among astronauts, he'll always be first in my heart. No, wait, that's wrong. That's Alan Shepard. Alan Shepard will always be first in my heart. Second, then. It doesn't matter. Wherever he falls in my personal pecking order of star voyagers, here are five heroic things about Buzz Aldrin. Number one, he was one of the first people to walk on the moon. Kind of an obvious place to start, but there's so much other interesting stuff about Buzz that isn't directly related to the Apollo 11 moon landing that I figured I would just get it out of the way right up front. Neil Armstrong was the first human to walk on the moon, but he and Buzz Aldrin were in the same spacecraft when they landed, so technically speaking, they were both the first person on the moon. And let's not forget that Neil only got to go outside first because he won the right to take the seat closest to the lunar module hatch after defeating Buzz best two out of three in paper, rock, scissors. And let's also remember that I made that last bit up. Here's something I didn't make up. This image of an astronaut standing on the surface of the moon, one of the most iconic photographs ever taken, that's Buzz. Not too shabby. But like I said, there's a lot more to appreciate about Buzz Aldrin than his role in the Apollo 11 moon landings. Rewind his NASA career about three years and you'll see. Number two, he was a record-setting part of Project Gemini. Buzz was the pilot on Gemini 12, the final mission of Project Gemini. During the flight, Buzz performed three extravehicular activities, including a two-hour spacewalk that demonstrated for the first time that astronauts could work effectively outside of the spacecraft for extended periods of time, an absolutely crucial mission objective heading into the Apollo program. Buzz spent a total of five and a half hours executing EVAs on Gemini 12, which at the time was the longest period anyone had ever spent in space, but outside of a spacecraft. That was in November 1966. In July 1969, Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon. And several decades later, while reflecting on something that he had done while on the lunar surface, number three, he was introspective about the role of religion during the Apollo 11 moon landing. While he was on the moon, Buzz Aldrin did something that no one had ever done before. He took communion on the surface of the moon using a special communion kit given to him by his pastor. Buzz, a Presbyterian who was an elder at his church at the time, was advised by NASA to downplay this since the federal government had been sued after the crew of Apollo 8 read from the book of Genesis during a worldwide television broadcast the previous Christmas. But here's what really impresses me. Looking back on the experience in his 2009 book, Magnificent Desolation, Buzz writes, quote, Perhaps, if I had it to do over again, I would not choose to celebrate communion. Although it was a deeply meaningful experience for me, it was a Christian sacrament. And we had come to the moon in the name of all mankind, be they Christians, Jews, Muslims, animists, agnostics, or atheists. How do you not love this guy? And I'll tell you something else. Number four. He's a longtime advocate of a human mission to Mars. Buzz has publicly pushed for a mission to Mars for decades, and not just a mission, a sustained presence. In 2013, he wrote an op-ed for the New York Times where he called for an international effort to establish a permanent human presence on the moon, and to then use that as a launching pad to build a homestead on Mars, transforming humanity into, as he put it, a two-planet species. Going to Mars, Buzz writes in that op-ed, means staying on Mars. He even proposed a trajectory that would bring spacecraft in regular close proximity to Mars and Earth, allowing for regular transportation of people and supplies between the two planets while requiring a minimum of time and fuel. That trajectory is now known as the Aldrin Cycler. So he's a pioneering astronaut with a bold vision for humanity's future in space, one of the all-time great ambassadors for the American space program. That's plenty, but there's one other thing I love about old Buzz. It is so petty when put next to the man's other accomplishments, but I don't care. 
It's number five. He punched a moon hoaxer. Here, I'll show you. Here it comes. Oh! <laughs> this happened in 2002. The jaw on the receiving end of Buzz's fist belongs to Bart Sibrell, a moon landing conspiracy theorist who confronted Buzz outside a hotel with a camera crew, demanded that he swear on a Bible that he had actually landed on the moon, then called him a liar and a coward and a thief. <laughs> so Buzz punched him. And I am completely okay with that. In fact, I am filled with delight every single time I see it. Just one more time, please. <laughs> he, just, he just punched him right in the fucking face. Oh, oh. Thank you, Buzz, for everything. The hardest part is picking only five. See you next time. <laughs> just again, come on. <laughs> hey folks hope you enjoyed that one if you did please like share and subscribe and also please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through patreon you can go to patreon.com steve shives to become a patron thanks for watching